Hey guys, Garrett here, and if you're building an ICF house, another thing you need to think about is that attached garage. Most likely, if you're building a house, you're going to have an attached garage, whether it's a one car, two car, three car, four car, doesn't matter what it is, you're probably gonna have one, but the question is, do you make that ICF as well? I'm actually fairly torn on this. I built my garage as ICF, and to be honest, if I could go back, I probably wouldn't have. But let's look at the different reasons why you would versus wouldn't build it with ICF. If you don't care if your garage is insulated at all, obviously don't do it with ICF. You're gonna save money by just stick framing. If you're not planning to put uh, insulation in the attic of that garage, again, just stick build it. If you're planning to use your garage more than just storage, you're actually gonna use it as a workshop and you're planning to heat and cool that part of the time, definitely do ICF. Just remember if you're going to be heating and cooling this area, it has to be a system that is separate from your house's system. They cannot be interconnected. So you're probably going to be putting like a mini split or something like that within your garage area. Or you're going to be using space heaters or something like that. Definitely wouldn't use anything that uses fuel like uh, propane or diesel or kerosene. Any of that puts too many fumes. You start getting into carbon monoxide issues. You just don't want to put your yourself in that situation. But if you fall somewhere in the middle, like me, where you're going to use that garage sometimes to do projects, but you're not planning to put an HVAC or anything like that in it, and you wouldn't mind it being insulated, then you've got a quandary. On the one hand, most likely you are going to be insulating it regardless if you are doing ICF or stick frame. But the big advantage of the ICF is not only it's very high R value, but that thermal mass in the wall. Well, if that space isn't heated or cooled the vast majority of the time, it's gonna take a lot of heat input or cooling power to get that thermal mass to be in your favor. So when it comes to the garage, at least in my opinion, I'm not sure that the ICF thermal mass side of it really helps you too much in that aspect. A couple more things to think about. If your house is anything like mine, I've got 10 foot ceilings. So all of my walls, the basement, as well as the main floor were roughly 10 feet. And if you're doing an ICF, you're going to have bracing. Well, the bracing generally comes in eight foot or 10 foot links. Well, my garage has 12 foot walls on it. If you're trying to calculate bracing, you gotta remember that most of the time, especially if your basement is going to be the exact same size as your main level, you can use the exact same number of braces from the basement to do your top pour. But if you're adding ICF in the garage area, you're gonna need a whole bunch more bracing, which costs more money. Not only that, but then if you're like me, 12 foot ceilings, you're gonna have to have longer bracing. Those 10 foot braces are not going to be adequate to do a 12 foot wall. I'll be the first to admit, the walls of my garage are the least straight of all of them, and it's because of their height. I just was unprepared for that height. I made my own braces that were only 10 feet long, and the fact that so much weight was above it started making things curl in and out a little bit and actually just pulled the wall out of plumb. Had I had the correct bracing, wouldn't have been a big issue, but I didn't think about that whenever I was making my braces. If your walls are 12 feet tall, like mine were, I would suggest doing at least three lifts of concrete. So do a four foot lift and then go to the other main walls of the house and then another four foot lift and then the other main walls of the house. And then finally the last four foot lift. Thankfully, by the time you get to those second and third tiers of lifts, the concrete is actually starting to set up within the walls. So it's gonna be a lot less likely to wanna to pull your walls out of plumb. The next thing I want you to think about is the garage door openings. So are you going to have single car openings? Are you gonna have a double car opening that's 16 feet wide? It makes a big difference if you're doing ICF. If you have a single car garage, you can put ICF across the top of it, get your rebar as well as your stirrups all correctly, and be just fine on the load side of things. But when you're trying to do that 16 foot span, it gets pretty tough. I'm not saying it's impossible to get 
all the rebar and everything correct up there to have ICF across the top of that garage door. But it's probably a little more money than you want it to be and you're probably going to have to get an engineer involved in order to make it work. If you look at my build, I have three car garage, so two of them are on one side with a single door and then a single car. I built the ICF with the single car, but I left it out on the double car and I just use LVLs on top of it. And part of the reason is the roof structure actually has its load bearing on those particular walls. So if your garage doors are on the end of your house and you've got a gable end, which then makes that wall non-load bearing, you have a lot more choices and you don't have to build it so robustly. But if it's like mine and it is load bearing, you need to make sure that everything can take that load. I know I've mentioned this in the past, but you gotta remember ICF blocks are thick. So I use six inch ICF blocks on my main level and that included the garage. Well, those blocks by themselves are 11 inches thick. So my 25 foot deep garage is actually only 23 feet of usable space by the time you add in the sheetrock. Well, if I framed that, I would have gained at least another foot inside that garage. You know, six inches here, six inches there may not sound like a lot, but when you're trying to put storage shelving in your garage or you have a big long truck that's going to be in there, you need some walking space. So you need every inch that you can get. And your garage doors themselves are gonna be situated on the inside of that block wall. So you lose all that space as well. You guys know that I have a workshop that's dedicated to doing the vast majority of the projects that I wanna do. I also use that attached garage to finish some of the house projects like the trim you know I've got saws and that sort of stuff out there but I don't really rely on it being heated and cooled I just wait for decent days so realistically I probably should have just done a stick built garage attached to my ICF house in the end it would have been a little bit cheaper it would have been faster as well and Ultimately, it would have given me a little extra space within that garage area. Ultimately, it's up to you to do whatever you feel is right. I guess my point with this video is it's something you need to think about. And just because you're building an ICF house does not mean that you have to build an ICF garage with it. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.